So today, I'm gonna be setting up as much of this body kit as I can so that I can get an idea for where the intercooler is gonna go. Cause I really wanna get this intercooler piping and get the engine all plumbed correctly so it can kinda idle and make sure that's all good. So let's see what has to be done to get this bumper to fit. This could not be any more convenient. So it looks like right where this bracket is, I can just make a little bracket that comes off and grabs this lip. Oh, that's awesome. And then the back, where someone put these, I could just put the body fasteners. So I think with this, I'm going to do um, rib nuts for all the panels. So I'll have the bumper hook onto those brackets. And then I'll have rib nuts in the fender um, for the side skirts and the front bumper. And then the back bumper, I checked this before. The back bumper, I'm going to have to make like a little lip here that the lip of the back bumper can sit in and then I'll have nuts here for that. But because I don't actually have the body fasteners, I'm probably just going to fit the front bumper um, pretty close so I can do the intercooler piping and then when I get the rib nuts and bolts which are coming Amazon Prime so they should be here um, probably within a few days, uh, then I can actually start putting the panels on. But for now I'm just going to focus on the front and then I'll move on to the piping. So this is how decent we were able to get the front bumper to fit. Pretty decent. It, it looks crooked because nothing's being held up on this side. But once, once this is mounted to where it's supposed to go, everything kind of lines up nice. But yeah, you can let go of that. But it's very simple. Jeez. All I did was made these little, oh wow, that's crooked as hell. I made these brackets they just bolt in here and they hold the lip on the bumper and they can kind of be bent to tweak it how you need to. So I currently have the intercooler uh, propped up to where it would fit well on the bumper. And I measured off the height down where I want it to sit and I know it needs to be up against this plate here to be the distance back. So I have this piece of angle steel laying around and it lines up, it'll line up pretty well with those those uh, threaded holes in the intercooler and also there's a hole in this plate so what I'm thinking of doing is cutting this to about this length uh, drilling a hole and putting a through bolt through here with a standoff to keep it the distance out so I can adjust that by lengthening that bolt and then I can uh, bolt the intercooler to it and that should work and also if I wanted to I can bolt this through like a rubber grommet or something uh, rubber bushing if I want it to be have some you know vibration resistance I don't want it hitting this so I can stand it off enough with that so that should be good so I'm going to cut this to length and then play around with some stuff I have laying around so I just finished bolting this up luckily I had some of these like one inch thick looks like some sort of really really hard rubber bushing um, so I threaded that through here which kind of gives it a little bit of spring which you know makes it, it's not going to vibrate, gives it some dampening, and it doesn't, it doesn't contact over here, which is nice, and that should still give room for a coupler. Um, I might have to cut off this bolt here. Um, it might be really close depending on how I run this pipe, but I, I'll probably just cut this off just to be safe. But as of right now, that looks really good. So we got the bumper fitted. It's going to look like that, which I'm very happy with, and there's plenty of room to route the piping. Um, you can kind of see it, I had to notch the dam on the bottom of the bumper for the two bottom attachment points of the intercooler. But the way it works, which I think it actually works out pretty well, is the 
that bottom part actually kind of pushes a little bit of pressure, which keeps the bumper, you know, fairly rigid, which will be good. So it'll kind of hold it where it needs to be. I'll probably actually end up cutting out more of this tray here and leave the rail because this isn't that's flappy you know there's no structural integrity to that I and mean, I can run the pipe right there and not worry about hitting the tire but it's getting late gonna call it a night uh, the next time next time I'm here I'm gonna be putting the inner core piping in and then the ball is just gonna keep rolling <sighs> Sometimes you don't realize how long it takes you to do something as simple as putting an inner core in. But I'm really happy with the way that came out. It's really sturdy. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys when I do that. Pretty late start today, but between today and tomorrow, my goal is to get the inner core piping in and all set. Something I didn't film uh, was I took the Turbo 2 throttle cable and made a little bracket because the mounting point for the throttle adjustment is far back with the T2 cable. The, the 1J bracket's like here and it would have way too much slack. So this is really good to just make a little L, drill two holes, make a little slot for that. But now I got a gas pedal, so that's good. So I'm gonna set the camera up and mock up some intercooler piping and uh, what I don't do tonight, I will pick up tomorrow. the uh, hot side piping all done now and it uh, looks pretty good to me everything's sealed pretty well um, I'm not gonna do the intake until I get a uh, two and three quarter inch 45 because this is actually a little bigger than the throttle body and I there's no way I can stretch this on same with the uh, MAF so I'm just gonna do a, a larger 45 than the MAF and a filter but next thing I'm gonna fit the bumper and I'm gonna start using uh, rib nuts to mount the body panels and actually get this all fitted. So once I line this bumper up, I made a hole in the bumper and then I'm going to start a hole in the fender. Pull this out of the way. So you drill this hole for the fastener and then this hole to the size of the rib nut, which in my case is about 11.30 seconds, so I marked the step drill so I don't go too far. So this riv nut should. Oh. Oh. So that should do it. So 
you take a rivnut tool, this is a really simple one. Basically what you do is you thread this into the rivnut. So you get that in there. Then you take your wrench and you compress the rib nut. So you tighten this until it gets, you can feel it, it'll get like real tight. And that's when you stop. And then you come in, I gotta get an Allen wrench to take this nut out. But that's in there. This way, instead of using rivets, it actually almost looks like a rivet, but you can actually take it out. So I'll have one of these on either side of the bumper, which will hold the bumper on. And then I'll do a couple for the uh, side skirt to the fender, uh, a couple from the side skirt to the body in the back, and then the over fenders will have those, and then probably from the rear bumper to the body as well. So I have two rivnuts on the fender for the side skirt. I got two back here on the body for the back side skirt, and then I have two inside the car to tuck that flange in. So I'm gonna pop that on and then show you what it looks like with the fasteners in. So this is what the passenger side looks like. Once I have all the fasteners installed with the rib nuts, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. Uh, tomorrow I'll do the driver's side and the rear bumper. And this thing is looking sick! So we'll pick this up tomorrow.